Well, I would just say that babies don't learn to walk by walking. They learn to walk by balancing, Bad. shifting their body weight, getting strong, liberating a, weight, a limb to move because they can shift their weight to the other side. That it's really more to it than just being walked. Um, so be careful with people advertising that if you just walk them around, they'll learn to walk. Um, it's, it's a backdoor approach to an issue that has many more front doors. Olá, tudo bem? Hoje nós estamos mais uma vez aqui com a Beverly Cruz, que é fisioterapeuta conhecida internacionalmente, e hoje nós vamos falar um pouco sobre marcha. Eu acredito que na minha experiência com pais, até com a minha mãe, com meu pai, né, no, no meu dia a dia de trabalho, essa é uma questão muito importante para vocês, né? Meu filho vai andar? Como é que meu filho vai andar? Qual, qual é o objetivo? O que, que eu tenho que fazer para o meu filho andar? Então hoje a gente vai falar sobre marcha. O que, que é uma marcha virtuosa? Como uma criança com desenvolvimento normal consegue a marcha? E qual, o que, que a gente deve esperar por, pelo, por uma criança com paralisia cerebral adquirir essa marcha? So Billy, thank you again to come to have a new interview with us. And now we are going to talk about walking. I think in the first video we you started talking a little bit about walking and about orthosis and about how the manage of weight and for the walking process is so i want to ask you what is a virtuous walking for a typical development kids and what should I, we expect for the P cp kids well thank you for having me it's a pleasure to talk to you uh, this is an important topic for me because it has much to do with what we do with children with cerebral palsy um, I've studied the development of walking my whole life, as decades, and there are volumes and volumes of literature written on it uh, because people are interested in how babies learn to walk and how long it takes them to achieve a level of skill that is actually the adult level. They reach maturity in all aspects of walking. And as it happens, um, babies will look like they've learned to walk like grown-ups when they're about three years old. They have a heel strike and they've got, you know, a... Uh, Knees swing out straight when they swing their leg, and their arms swing like, like ours do. But actually, that's just the first page of achieving full virtuoso level walking. Um, it's actually going to take them another seven years, up to ten years, to wash out all of the differences in everything about walking that makes them a child versus a grown-up. It takes up to ten years to fix every little detail about walking that has to do with making it efficient, making it... Um, uh, lifelong to keep your body going as long as possible. So with this information I also uh, discovered that A.E. Erickson in 1996 published uh, many studies that showed that virtuoso level skills are acquired after 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. That if you want to become a maestro at a violin or and I mean a real virtuoso, this isn't somebody who's pretty good at it this is someone who becomes concertine level, national renowned, you know, professional athlete, things like that. So virtuoso level skill actually is going to require about 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. And then um, I kept digging for more information about that because I thought, well, how many years does that make? And I found another uh, website that took that information and broke it down into hours of practice per day. And it happens that if you were to practice a skill three hours a day, every day. It would take you 10 years to learn that skill. If you practice the same skill four hours a day, every day, it would take you seven years to learn that skill. Well, guess what? Children who are typically developing finish cleaning up all of the issues that are different between children and adults and become virtuoso walkers at any age between seven and 10 years. And I'm sure that has to do with the hours of walking they've put in. So as much as it may seem that walking is simple, it actually is going to take a child three years of work just to get to the place where he looks like a little grown-up swinging his arms, and another seven years, up to seven more years, to bring in all of the efficiencies, all of the energy conservation epi uh, um, mechanisms, all of the propulsion and, and uh, energy conserving mechanisms, the full hip extension range of motion you need to uh, launch a swing limb efficiently, all of these little bugs in, in walking that make it more difficult than it should be are worked out in about 10 years, and that makes walking a virtuoso level skill for the typically developing child, for all of us. So now let's bring that over to cerebral palsy. 
why would you think that a child who hasn't learned how to get himself up on his feet, which is what babies do for 12 straight months, practice walking on as shifting their body weight on their feet, which they do 5,000 times per hour of standing, 3,000 to 5,000 weight shifts every hour of standing until they finally let go of the sofa. And then practice taking steps and do it with much difficulty and 17 falls every hour for months and months until they finally get a heel strike. And then still work on uh, efficiencies and range of motion deficits and the problems that are, are interfering with mature walking. Years after year after year after year of getting walking going. Why would you think that your child with cerebral palsy, who's compromised to begin with, and didn't go through all the preparations that a baby does, would suddenly learn how to walk in a month using a device? Babies don't learn to walk with devices. Even when they stand at sofas, they don't lean on them. They just touch the sofa. Their hands are engaged, but they're not putting their weight on their hands like they do on a walker. So if that's the case, if you want your child to learn to do something efficiently, as normally as possible, as capably as possible, Putting your child on a walker, particularly before he's got any skills or any balance, is only teaching your child to use the walker because we learn what we live. Uh, and typical children never walk on devices. So that's what the virtuosity of walking and the realizations of my research have brought to me, and that is to be reasonable with my kids with CP, help them build the components that they need for stability, balance, and weight shift capability, give them big, decent feet that they can actually stand on and feel confident in, and then go for walking the way babies do, because babies are our encyclopedia of how to learn to move. Just watch them move, and they teach us everything we need to know. We just need to give our children enough practice at the skills that babies build for themselves. So, let me see if I understand. You are telling us that we need to they need to go to all the practice before walking before we put them in a in a how the name um don't put them in a walker in a walk no to avoid no a walker. walker never walker the idea is to try to avoid ever using a walker there are devices that are better uh the up and go walker is actually a partial weight bearing walker that's made for you not to load your hands it is made to be therapeutic most of the walkers are made for you to load your hands and mm -hmm. automatically, as soon as you use those, you're on your way to learning how to walk on a walker but not walk by yourself. To walk by yourself after using a walker where you loaded your hands is immensely difficult and rarely happens. And a can, for example. Uh, the same thing about using same. devices to lean on. If you use a device to lean on, to learn to walk, you are learning to lean on the device. You are not learning to walk. It's in Brazil, it's very common that we see kids, it's not built yet to walk. They put on walkers, but or because they said, ah, they need to be stand. I know. And we can put them standing, but not in the walker, do you think? Because uh, we need to do... Yes, there's, a, there's reason to believe that if you can build postural control in upright position. I mean, I don't think you have to take every child with CP, who's eight years old, and go to prone and get extension, supine get flexion, go through all the same phases uh -huh. that a baby did, but you have to build the skill okay. of controlling your trunk and controlling your hips. The Movement Center in the UK, go to the website, themovementcenter.com, C-E-N-T-R-E, has a program called Targeted Training. And with that, they actually help children build the postural control that they need to use in therapy to learn to carry their body weight, shift their body weight, and move. Postural control training means Stability. Learn stability. If you have stability, you can bring it to movement. You must build stability. Babies do that too. When they get to upright position, they build stability and weight shift skills before they move away from furniture. Mm -hmm. But they never leaned on the furniture. Okay. They just touched it. That's different from leaning on a walker. And every child at every functional level is not going to walk. Every child at every functional level, I'm not expecting to get up and walk without a walker. I'm talking about the children who have potential to be level one and two. Maybe they're at three, have the potential to build to level one or two. These are the children I would say, you have potential to walk, do everything you can to avoid leaning on anything. Better to even cruise around a room like babies do. Use walls, use furniture, maybe put a rope course around a classroom, use a rope that's not entirely dependable, uh -huh. but do what babies do. Babies sidestep before they walk forward. So side, there is, um, uh, a uh, very interesting thing that she always told, tell us to do is a garbage can. 
Yep. Or is the garbage can device? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary Weck thought of this. I and mean, actually, Mary Weck is my, my primary mentor in body weight management. And she figured out that for children who are at home who need to learn to shift their body weight and carry their weight back and feel confident with that, that if you put, get a big Rubbermaid trash barrel and you bolt it to a, a board on the floor, and I've got instructions for this, by the way, um, that if you build a, a, a standing barrel, that if it's a stable barrel and it's not allowed to tip over, that the child can use this like a training place to work on weight shifts, maybe play ball, be safe inside the barrel to, to shift his body weight and control it. And you can gradually, you can stuff it full of foam and then move the foam back until he can do better and bigger weight shifts. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to learn to stay upright by being upright and be challenged to shift your weight in upright but not have to have somebody's hands on you all the time. Okay. The barrel takes care of the safety net the safety. for you to practice. Oh, great. I will... I eu adoro esse, esse barril de lixo, né? É bem interessante, a gente vai deixar as instruções aqui no baixo, vai ter o site que vocês vão poder ver. É um, é um aparelho fácil de ser feito em casa, que é uma forma de seu filho estar tá realmente treinando essa, esses movimentos, essas, a mudança de peso, né? De uma perna para outra, de trabalhar o tronco, a posição ereta. E você não tem que estar com a mão nele o tempo inteiro. É uma forma dele estar sozinho treinando. E, nossa, é muito interessante para as crianças também terem essa liberdade. Então, eu I think we are okay with walking. Do you, você te, do you have something more that you could say to the parents about how, what you could say to them? Well, I would just say that babies don't learn to walk by walking. They learn to walk by balancing, Bad. shifting their body weight, getting strong liberating a, way, a limb to move because they can shift their weight to the other side. That it's really more to it than just being walked. Um, so be careful with people advertising that if you just walk them around, they'll learn to walk. Um, it's, it's a backdoor approach to an issue that has many more front doors. So, muito obrigada mais uma vez a todos vocês por estarem aqui conosco. Obrigada, Billy. Thank you, Billy, to come. And Thank you for having me. See you next time. Bye-bye.